What is up guys? I'm Matthew Robinson and this is my first reaction video of my series. And guess where I'm at right now? That's right, Hawaii. Oh yeah. So today I'm going to react to a video about some kind of comedy director whose work I've never seen but when I think of it I actually love. And that movie director is Edgar Wright. But who is Edgar Wright? Well, that's exactly what we're going to find out. Before I do, I don't want to spread any hate on modern comedy directors. So when there's a really, really good joke that the audience laughs at a lot, either like cinematography or dialogue, then that is pretty hilarious. But when there's no cinematography and the only thing that jokes come from is a dialogue, that's just so boring. That is the main point of this essay. But before I actually do the reaction segment, I have to put on my shirt. Got it right there. So my neighbors won't actually see my hidden chest pack. Hi, my name is Tony and this is Every Frame of Painting. So today I'm going to talk about a director whose work I love, but before that, let me be upfront. I think comedy movies today, especially American ones, have totally lost their way. I don't hate the jokes or the actors or the dialogue or the stories, though there's plenty of issues there. My real qualm is that the filmmaking, the use of picture and sound to deliver jokes, is just... What? This is boring. Boring? Yeah, I can relate to that. Look, everyone's taste is different. What you find funny is what you find funny. So I'm not saying these movies suck or you suck if you like them. What I am saying is that these movies aren't movies. They're lightly edited improv. Everyone stands still and talks at each other in close-up. Almost none of these jokes come visually. They're overwhelmingly sound. And not even the full range of sound, it's just dialogue. And this is really sad because that's just a fraction of what's possible in cinema. Apart from animation and some commercials, visual comedy is actually moving backwards. And that's why, if you love this kind of stuff, I cannot recommend Edgar Wright enough. Doctor, deal with it. Yeah, motherfucker. Oh. He's one of the only people he just the said. using the full range of what is possible. And because of that, he can find humor in places that other people don't look. Here's an example. Let's say you need to move your character from one city to another to get your story going. How do you shoot it? And can you get a joke out of it? Well, no. Not if you send out a second unit to do it. Every shot pans from left to right. You include really obvious landmarks and signs. You mix in generic helicopter footage and you put upbeat music under it so the audience doesn't get bored. This is just lazy filmmaking and boring. We've seen it a million times. What would happen if you were truly invented with mm. this type of scene? I get the ones that modern comedy does is boring. But take a look at this though. There we go. And this isn't just a series of quick cuts. There's a lot of good visual storytelling here. These two taxi shots tell you exactly where we came from and where we're going. These two shots emphasize the move away from civilization. Our main character always faces forward or to the right, so screen direction is respected. Turning the music down and the sound effects up is funny because each cut is jarring. And there's even some nice performances from Simon Pegg and Ryan Gosling. Okay, uh, a lot of YouTubers do this. Context. You're right, totally unfair. But it's pretty impressive and funny. Well, what if you had a movie where a whole oh, little battery happens and you want to foreshadow it earlier, maybe by having the characters not notice something important on TV? How would you show it? Would you just throw it in the edit for two seconds and two frames and none of the shots shows the relationship between the characters and the TV? Um, he's having a housewarming party. He just finished building his house. Or would you do this? There's no joke in the way the Mark comedies do it. Wait a minute. As an increasing number of reports of people who are literally being eaten alive okay so the tv tells a story a the tv tells a story and you want to get a joke out wow how would you do it would they just stand around and talk about his drinking I it, but i told my wife i wouldn't drink tonight besides i got a big day tomorrow but but you guys have a great time a big day doing what or would you do this what The 
This is what separates mm -hmm. a mediocre director from a great one. The ability to take the most simple, mundane scenes and find new ways to do them. Great directors oh, yeah. understand that you can get a laugh just through staging. Really? Here's an example I cribbed from David Boardwell. Things popping up into frame are funny. Maybe not the shark, but maybe what's next? Oh. And it's not just oh. entering frame. Consider oh, I, I saw this clip from this essay on Bathos with some. Oh, whoa! From a zoom. <laughs> Did they actually include the puppet? Wow! I'm so sorry. I'm going home, Rita. I know, Shirley. I know. No, seriously, I'm going home. Can you help me? Oh. Oh. You can get a laugh from a pan. <laughs> seriously, I'm going home. Can you help me? Up? Oh, in this. She just left him in onto the helicopter while well, she's she's really quick. <laughs> As Martin Scorsese put it, cinema is a matter of what's in the frame and what's not in the frame. Oh, look at the guy. He was like, frame. and this isn't just a matter of smart or stupid comedy. Wow. Really, if it works, it works. So with that, here are eight things Edgar Wright does with picture and sound that I want to see other comedy filmmakers try out. Number one, things entering the frame in funny ways. Okay. It's for Scott. The geographical location shouldn't factor in. Maybe they don't always do this no, for things entering the frame in funny ways. People leaving the frame in funny ways. Oh, number two. What? We don't know how to switch off. You didn't see anything suspicious, and who did? Number three, there okay. and back again. Okay. I still have that. Maybe I don't. I definitely don't want to make these kinds of movies. Transitions. Number four. Oh, he just vanished. Where is he now? Yeah, I remember this one. Wallace, how do you do that? Wallace. <laughs> wow. Number five. The perfect Whoa. time sound effect. Wait, he just got a hole through his stomach. Did he get him That time he dumped Kim. Okay, me and Kim are all good now, right? Do feel free to spool through. Number six, action oh. synchronized to the music. Oh, what? Oh. Oh. Drinking beer pubs. Shall we? Oh. Number seven, super dramatic lighting cues. Wait. J super dramatic lighting cues has to do with comedy? Wait. That light could actually hurt his eyes. I forbid you from hitting on Ramona, even if you haven't had a real girlfriend in over a year. <sighs> and number eight. I'm taking a shortcut before. <laughs> what if he actually kicked the fence and went through? And you know what? Let's throw in number nine. Let him have it. Oh, man. So if you're a filmmaker, work on this. The frame is a playground, so play. Okay. And the next time you go to a theater and you pay 15 bucks to see a comedy, don't be satisfied with shit that is less inventive than buying. So, that's the reason overall I don't like visual comedies. They're so, I mean, modern comedies. They're really not inventive. So not inventive. Later, after eating Panera Bread and Paco's Tacos. That's pretty much it for this video. Shout out to Panera Bread and Paco's Tacos. They're really great restaurants. And until next time, peace out, guys.